deeply honored to have been asked by students today to do this, especially the class of 2020. You see, I was hired two days before classes began in 2016, so I was a freshman with you. I'm not sure how I got through that chaotic first year, but I know I survived and stayed because of you, Fremont students. You are, of course, all individuals, but when I think of you as a group, Fremont students are kind, funny, genuine, empathic, ambitious, hardworking, and you don't take yourselves too seriously. I am stunned by your energy, your creativity, your athleticism, your dedication to your clubs, your TikTok accounts, your friends, and to the vending machines. You've been very patient with me as I tried to navigate through high school. When I accepted to do this speech four days ago, I did what I always do. I panicked, procrastinated, and then went to the font of all knowledge, YouTube. I looked at a few speeches by famous people and thought, no way, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving advice to the generation that invented the phrase, okay, boomer. I'm Gen X, by the way, just saying, and I don't know when we started naming generations anyway, and I don't know why we started at X. What do we do after you, Generation Z? I'm not very good at following advice, so I'm not going to give it. In these four years, you taught me way more than I taught you. While I was going on about synthesis and metaphors, you gave me slang to torture my own children with. So who am I to tell you how to secure the bag? This is no ordinary graduation, because 2020 is no ordinary year. When we were sent at home for shelter in place, the excitement and awe of being involved in an unprecedented global event was palpable. One of my students asked me, is this our generation's 9-11? Over the following weeks, we be gradually began to feel the emptiness of it all. For survival and safety, we have remained at home, sheltering in place. This is our way of protecting ourselves and taking care of each other. But there is an undeniable sense of life being peeled away, leaving us all feeling a little raw and vulnerable. I asked my students what you've lost most in the lockdown, and overwhelmingly you said, each other. Because though it seems like school is set up for teachers to impart knowledge to students, in fact, you need each other way more than you need the content we hope you'll learn. We can consciously teach diversity, but nothing replaces the person sitting beside you fasting for Ramadan, or taking a day off for Yom Kippur, or chatting about Diwali, or Easter, or Kwanzaa. I hope we'll remember this feeling of separateness, because that too has been a teacher. I hope the students know just how much we teachers miss you. I've even heard that the deans miss you. Well, some of you. I love teaching seniors. At first I saw your faces on Zoom, but within a week you collectively turned off those cameras. Now you're just boxes with names on a screen. We've lost so many dimensions. I can't walk among you. I can't even take your cell phones off you. You don't burst into my room at brunch full of stories and moaning. I can't believe I even miss your moaning. 2020 is no ordinary year, but you're not an ordinary group of people. Your senior year began as the Amazon forests were burning, and fellow high school students all across the planet connected online to march against climate change. We had your tiny prophet Greta Thunberg tell world leaders, you say you love your children above all else, yet you are stealing their future. Many of you at Fremont protested in solidarity with her in the largest mass strike in history. And you, teenagers, led it. It was as if, the, as, as if humans needed this time out. And we got our time out, COVID-19. I'm sorry that the pandemic cut your year short. Seniors suffered more than anyone else in this school. The virus snatched your rituals. Senior sunset, prom, senior rally, athletic senior nights, and even senior ditch day. Don't worry, we like that day too. We catch up on grading. And now graduation. That's the most disappointing. You've worked so hard, you've struggled, you've rewrote papers, you've taken summer school, you've studied for exams, you've retaken the exams you should have been studying for just to get here. But where is here this year? 
Some of you are the first in your family to graduate. Many of you are first generation Americans. For those of you who choose not to go to college, this might be your only graduation. To have this event stolen by a virus seems so cruel. I'm so sad I'm not standing here in front of you, feeling your incredible energy, looking at your hopeful, vibrant faces. When I see you in my classroom, I know I am looking at the future. And I like what I see, and I miss you so much. But though it has been a disaster, this virus has also been a teacher. This virus has shown us how interconnected we all are, and that what happens to one person happens to us all. I know Fremont's students understand this, because one of the things I really like about Fremont is that you already know you aren't your GPA or your grades or your performance on the field. Just as you know, you won't be your college or your job or the car you drive. You will be how you make each other feel, how you treat the earth. Do you take care of those who take care of you? Do you protect the world that feeds you? This virus taught us that celebrities, sports stars, high-tech billionaires are not the essential workers. Who knew, right? In fact, essential workers are those who take care of the sick and the elderly. Essential workers are the people who pick, deliver, prepare our food, who stock our supermarkets, who sit at checkouts, sanitation workers. Some of you are essential workers. Shout out to AJ, who does all his Zoom classes from the toilet in Chipotle on Sunnyville. We learned that the health of one person in this food system is the health of us all. I almost feel like a fraud giving a graduation speech when I was terrible at high school myself. I look at you in awe. You are so much more aware, sophisticated, and clear-minded than I was at your age. You have been my teachers. I remember the sophomore who had to keep waking up in class. I assumed he was up all night playing Grand Theft Auto. Then he told me his parents were deported and he was staying at his friend's house with a sister who he had to take care of. This kid worked from four to 10 every night in a fast food restaurant. I don't care what his GPA was or how many AP classes he took or if he was able to join a sports team. He's one of my heroes for coming to class and for graduating today. But a society that allows that to happen needs to change. I'm sorry, seniors, there are so many unknowns now, even the question of where you will be in the fall. Normally, this is an exciting time of the year for those who are leaving home, and that might not happen this year, but it will be beyond our control. Nothing is permanent, things will change, and so will you. I left Ireland at 17 when I finished high school. I thought I never wanted to sit in a classroom again. If only I had had a hoodie and AirPods to get through those classes. I didn't go to college till I was 26 years old, but I might have been late. I got there, and so will you. The virus has been a teacher. You already feel the shift to a different world, not the promised world of these placid, sunny suburbs, but the reality of a difficult world where massive changes are underfoot. Class of 2020, you are graduating under lockdown in a pandemic, and maybe your leaders have disappointed you. This virus teaches us that there are no borders. This virus teaches us that you are being sent into the future as the first truly global generation. You are connected with your fellow graduates all over the world, not by the internet only, but by a global pandemic, by a virus, by changing weather patterns, fires, droughts, 26, 65 million displaced people through climate and wars. There are children now in detention centers on our borders who don't know where our par their parents are. We do need change. The old world is shedding its skin. You recognize this. You won't win the fight for your future by building more warplanes, but by recognizing the fragility of our life systems. This is a challenge. But don't let it intimidate you. I understand you've been on pause for the last few months and watched way too many video games and worn out Netflix, but eventually you will be released. You will never forget this moment, the time when the world stopped, that this important part of your life was cut short. But I have seen you all walk out and protest when you needed to. I have seen you speak up when you needed to. You are not the last generation, Generation Z, and maybe you don't even need those stupid labels. You are our future, 
You have entered adulthood at this historic moment. And now you need to lead us to make changes. As Greta said, we loved our children, but we stole our future. So take it back. Whichever choices you make, whichever path you are leading, I'm glad you spent these years at Fremont. I've worked in many places, but let me tell you, this place is special. The care the adults have here for the children is beyond a job. You were well looked after at Fremont, and you were loved. And we had fun. I hope you stay in touch, but please stop calling me Mrs. Martin on Twitter, because that's just weird. Class of 2020, though this seems like an ending, not only of your high school, but of the world as it was, every ending is a beginning. You've grown up here with us, and now you go out into the larger world. I hope it is a world more aware of itself than it was just last year. You are firebirds, and you will rise from this challenge transformed. Go make the changes we need. Class of 2020, the world you deserve is the one you are now called on to create.